make it start in about one minute, one minute. Okay, here we go. Uh, any questions on the homework? Questions on the homework? Obviously you had the answers. You can check your work. So it was on the distance of the midpoint formula. Uh, we are done with those until the test. Uh, so you're not gonna see those again. Uh, just remember any difficulties that you had in learning those. So when we get to the test review days, we can go back to that frame of mind or frame of reference and 100% make sure on your resource card you have the formulas written and you also have an example or two on your resource card. All right, uh, make sure you have those turned in on Teams. Uh, I will be putting the grades in. Uh, here we go. So we're going to, we got three things left, right? Or three uh, lessons left. So today, brand new, you've never seen it before. Thursday, Friday, it's basically one thing but you've never seen that before either. So this is a chapter of a whole bunch of new things. Uh, we're going spring break. You're going to forget half of this stuff. So we're going to come back. We're going to need two days of review to remember all the stuff that we did. I'll promise you I'll make sure that um, the test uh, or the practice test that we do will be exactly like the test. So you'll have no doubt of whether or not uh, you can do it or not. But I will say we got to we got to hit our, uh, the uh, we come back from spring break, we got to hit, hit the ground running because we're going to take that test immediately afterwards. All right, here we go. Um, cube root worksheet, something about cube roots. We just finished a whole uh, seemingly chapter on square roots, and now we're going to cube roots. Yes, yes, we are. All right, it's already posted. It is new, slightly different rules than square roots, uh, and I will point out the important differences. So cube roots, uh, we're gonna do four things. Basically find cube roots and solve all the way through solving cubic equations. All right, so let's get on. All right, so we have been dealing with this entire chapter with square roots, right? We, we, we're very familiar with how to find a square root. So to find a square root, uh, basically you ask yourself what number multiplied by itself is the given number. In other words, 16, that would be four. Uh, remember, four can be written or 16 can be written as four times four or four to the second power. And squares and square roots are inverse operations of each other. They cancel each other out. Therefore, it gets rid of the square, it gets rid of the square root, and you're just left with four as your answer. Now you are very comfortable with this so far. Uh, quick note that the square root of 16. Right? We know it's a square root because the index where that arrow is pointing to, that index is two. And we are very lazy. We tend not to put in that two, right? the index. But the reality is, and it is true on some calculators, they will have that two written right there. That's how you take a square root, or that's, that's how you indicate. If there is no number for the index, we assume that it is a two. Uh, today, it's not going to be two, right? Uh, remember that uh, uh, square root is the inverse of squaring, right? So uh, we're really lazy. We just tend to leave off that two there. All right, so uh, where am I going with this? Uh, uh, squaring is the inverse of squaring. We're going to cube roots. So now we're not gonna be talking about what times itself is uh, 16. We'll be talking about what times itself, not twice, but that three means three times. In other words, what times itself three times is that number? Well, let's see. One times one times one is one. Uh, two times two times two, let's see, two times two is four times, oh, it's, it's two, because two times two times two is eight. And just like for square roots, we can write two times two times two as two to the third powers, 
Uh, and just like we saw previously, let me do this in red, that the cube root and cubing are inverses of each other. In other words, cube root and cubing, everything in red there, cancel each other out, and you're just left with two, okay? That is the basic idea of cube roots. Since you're familiar with square roots, cube roots is not a big leap of faith. It's not something that requires a whole lot of thought process, but I do need you to remember, we're gonna be thinking about something times itself three times. When I taught you square roots, the first thing we did was we wrote down the first 16 perfect squares, and that helped us memorize how to do square roots. So yes, what we're going to do, right? Uh, we're going to write down perfect, not squares, but we're going to write down perfect cubes. So the first perfect cube is zero, zero times zero times zero is zero. The second one, one times one times one is one. But the third one, two times two times two is eight. Okay? Uh, the third one is, is, is eight. That's our next perfect cube. So what we need to do is we need to write down the cube roots, right? Or I'm sorry, perfect cubes. So we'll do this one at a time. We're not going to throw in zero. It's kind of boring. One is also pretty boring as well, too. So uh, we're not going to do 16 of these. We'll do 10 of these, right? One through 10. So this will be our, well, I'm not going to call it box one. We'll call it box two. So box one was our perfect squares. Now we're going to do perfect cubes. So one times one times one. Well, the first perfect cube that we will consider is one. Now remember, zero is also a perfect cube. Uh, two times two times two, we already did that one. That one is eight. You should be writing these down. Uh, that third column right there is what you need to remember and the first column, okay? Uh, three times three times three, let's see. Three times three is nine times another three is 27. Wow, we went one, eight, 27. We are, we're jumping really high, really quickly, right? Remember perfect squares went one, two, four, nine, 16, 25. Right, the first five got us to 25. Well, the first three got us to 27 for perfect cubes. Uh, four times four times four, four times four is 16 times another four, 64. We're getting big really quickly. Uh, five times five times five uh, is 125. So in the first five perfect cubes, we're already over 100. It took us 10. Right, 10 squared is 100 to get to, uh, for squares, it took us 10 numbers uh, to get over 100. We're already over 105. Uh, six times six times six, you just need to write these down, 216. Seven times seven times seven, 343. All right, 216, sorta kind of memorable. 343, there's a pattern there, 343. Three. Eight times eight times eight, 512. Uh, nine times nine times nine, 729. Seven plus two is nine. Hey, that one's easy to remember. And the last one, 10 times 10 is 100 times another 10 is 1,000. All right, those are the first, well, that's technically the first 11, but we'll call it the first 10 perfect cubes. Now, how do you use this? Remember, the same way that we used perfect squares. So remember, if I take the cube root of this number, I get back to what I started with. If I take the cube root, remember, I got to put a three here. If I take the cube root of that number, I get back to the number I started with. If I cube this number right here, seven to the third power, I get to the perfect cube. So that's how this table is used. Uh, tonight for homework, literally, they're just going to ask you some cube roots, and you just need to remember uh, how this works. All right, any questions so far on what I've done? Cube roots and perfect cubes. No comment from the peanut gallery. All right, so let's see how this works. Uh, I need to take the cube root of 343, so we go back to uh, box number two, we'll call it. Uh, we find 343. Oh, I found it. I look to the left, and what number do I get? Someone pipe in. Seven. And that is the answer. All right. So we look at box two. Do I need to write all this in the middle? Well, you never wrote it for square roots, so the answer is no. 
right? But this is the process, right? So oh, there are six, one in front of you, use your box two. It should take you all of, I don't know, 10 seconds. Donovan, what's the cube root of 64 from box two? Is it 24? Uh, 24 was not one of the numbers in box two. Okay. Times itself three times is 64. Donovan, did you write down those numbers from box two? You need to, you gotta have those numbers written down. Cube root of 64 is four. Landon, cube root of a thousand. Oh, I already wrote the answer. Landon, what is the cube root of 125? Five. Boom. Uh, who else we got live here? Uh, Jace. Oh, I did it again. I'm clicking. Uh, Jace, the cube root of 216. Six. And lastly, I don't think we need to think this one too much. The cube root of one is one. All right. Oh, I thought I would have said you should give that to Jonathan because he didn't write anything down. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyone having issues with this? As long as you have that box two there, these are pretty simple, right? And yes, eventually you'll have these. I, I don't make it a goal to have uh, eighth graders have these memorized. When you get to high school, say somewhere around junior, senior year uh, is when you'll have these memorized because you'll use them frequently. All right. Well, I need you to think about this, right? Uh, the square root of, how do I know this is the square root, somebody? How do I know it's a square root and not a cube root? Because it doesn't have the three in the index. It doesn't have a three in the index. So remember, we to find out whether it's a square root or a cube root, we look right smack here. If there's a number there, it'll tell you what kind of root. By the way, there are more. There are fourth roots and fifth roots, right? Uh, we won't learn that until high school. But we look there where the arrow is pointed. We look there to see if there's a number there. And that number tells us whether what type of root. If there's no number there, it's a square root, right? When we took the square root of 36, we got six. Uh, what's the square root of negative four, someone? What's the square root of negative four? Somebody. Abby, what do you think? What's the square root of negative four? Um, I don't know. What number times itself is negative four? Negative two. What's negative two times negative two? Positive four. Not negative oh. four. So what number times itself is negative four? Jace, what do you think? There is no possible answer. There is no possible answer, right? There is no number that when you multiply it by itself, that is negative four, okay? So for square roots, when the negative is on the inside, negative is on the inside, there's no answer. If the negative is on the outside, okay, we can deal with that. That's just subtract the square root of whatever is there. So when the negative is on the outside, there is an answer. But when the negative is on the inside, there is no answer to square roots. Well, anybody want to take a guess? No answer. So that's why there is a difference between square roots and cube roots, because think about this. What's negative two times negative two times negative two? Because remember, cube roots don't say what times itself twice, but three times. What's it's negative? A positive. What's negative times a negative? Positive. But what's a positive times a negative? A negative. So what's negative two times negative two times negative two? Negative eight. Yeah, and that is our issue, is that fact that you can get an answer for cube roots. 
So for cube roots and only, at least this year, only cube roots, we get an answer when there's a negative on the inside. Is everybody tracking what I'm saying here? For square roots, there is no answer. Boom, nothing, no answers. But for cube roots, there is an answer to when negatives are on the inside. Square roots, no answer. Cube roots, answer. Questions? So how do you find the cube root of a negative number? Well, you still look at box two, just tack on a negative, okay? All right, so cube roots, there is an answer. So what's the cube root of negative 64? Look at box two. Negative four. And you are done, okay? You are done. All right, uh, so we said the cube root of negative 64 was negative four. What's the cube root of negative 125? Five. What did you say, Landon? Five. One more time? Five. I'm trying to help you. One more time? Hold on. Yeah, it's five. What's or that? negative five, sorry. There you, there you go. All right, one more time, Landon. I'm cube root of negative 27? Negative 27, okay, uh, it's negative three. All right, and the last one, Donovan, neg the root of negative one. Donovan, cube root of negative one. All right, Abby, cube root of negative one. Negative one. Okay, that's how you do it. Now, what typically happens is that this is one of the last things we do. So kids get in the habit of saying, oh, there's answers here, but remember there are no answers to square roots of negative numbers, right? Well, the answer is no answer, right? All right, so I had this box right here, but since you guys are all over it, Donovan, you back with me? Yep. What's the cube root of negative eight? What times itself three times is negative eight? You gotta have that box two written down. You're gonna need to rewatch this video and copy down all the answers from box two, negative two. All right, moving on. More things to think about, more things to think about. Uh, you guys remember how we did this one, somebody? Take the square root of the top and the bottom. So take the square root of the top, land in the square root of four is? There's no answer. Sure. Or, no, the square root, uh, that's going to be two. And the square root of nine? Three. So we get two thirds, right? Makes sense? Same thing for cube roots, except instead of taking square roots, we're taking cube roots. So you do the same process. We take the cube root of the top number and the cube root of the bottom number. So Landon, what's the answer here? Uh, it is three, or uh, yeah, three and four. Perfect, good job. All right, questions on that. So no big deal there. All right, uh, take a minute and do all this. All right, do you have a piece of paper, um, Donovan? Oh, Donovan dropped out of the video. Not hearing along. All right, Donovan, make sure that you go back and you go to box number two and you write down all those perfect cubes. All of those perfect cubes. Abby, you got this stuff? Yep. Good deal. All right, Jace, upper left, first one. Seven eighths. Okay. Landon, bottom left, what do you got? One over two. Oh, you guys are killing us. Abby, upper right.
Um, one over two. I got two fours, but remember that would reduce to one over two. Very good. Uh, I'm going to point out, I did point this out also for square roots. Notice that if you are given a fraction that can be reduced from the very start, you can do that. Um, let's see, eight over 64 could be reduced to right from the very start to one over eight. Eight goes into eight once, eight goes to 64 eight times. The cube root of one is one and the cube root of eight is two. So it is your choice whether you do the cube root first or you reduce the fraction first, uh, you will still get the same answer. Everybody understand what a point I'm trying to make there? Yeah. Cool. All right, and the last one is four nights. Four nights, four nights. Okay. Wow, we're doing a lot of thinking today. Uh, think about this, All right? Do uh, you guys remember how to solve this equation? Do the inverse. What's the inverse of squaring? Square root. So I take the square root of both sides. Remember, squares and square roots cancel each other. So the square root of x squared, the square and the square root cancel. I'm just left with x. And the square root of 36 is 6. So yes, that's how you solve equations involving squaring. Well, the same thing applies to cubing. To get rid of cubing, you, somebody finish the sentence. Use the cube root. I take the cube root of both sides. So I simply take the cube root of both sides. Uh, remember that cubing and cube rooting cancel each other out. They're inverse operations. So I would just be left with x and the cube root of 27 is three. Okay, so no big deal right there. Uh, cube roots, so to solve an equation involving cubing, we take cube roots. I take the cube root of both sides, cubing and cube rooting cancel each other out. So I'm just left with x and the cube root of 125 is five. All right, any questions on what I just did right there? No. Pretty simple. That's going to be a very quick class today. So go ahead and do these four, please. Yesterday I had about 20 people. Today I only have four live. All right, go around the room here. Landon, upper left, what's the final answer? Uh, that would be, wait, hold on, let me find it. Okay, that would be two. X equals two, correct. Uh, Jace, bottom left? Four. X equals four. Abby, upper right? One. X equals one. And who else is left here? That's it. Uh, last one would be negative 10. X equals negative 10. All right, questions on anything we've done so far? Cube roots are no big deal. By the way, for you curious ones out there, there are larger ones. We can take fifth roots and, I mean, you can even have decimals. You can take to the 3.1. Uh, the last thing, uh, I don't know if you guys have your calculators handy, but I do need to show you how to do it on a calculator. Do you guys have a calculator handy or no? Yeah. No. Abby? Yep. Uh, Landon, what kind of calculator you got? I have a scientific calculator. OK. All right, so I'll, I'll show you. Uh, Jace, you got scientific or graphing? No idea. Does it look like this one, sort of? Um, graphing are the ones with the really big screens, and it makes pictures. Make I, don't, I don't have a graph. OK, and Abby, you have a? Scientific. Okay, cool. 
All right, so to take a cube root, here's how you do it. Well, we already know the cube root of eight is two, right? So here's how you do it. Uh, somewhere on your calculator, you're going to find the cube root button. Now on this one on the screen, it's one I use in class, it's right there, but notice it's attached to the cube button, right? I don't know if yours is, right? But somewhere on your calculator, you're gonna have a cube button. Now, some calculators do not have that button. And I'll show you that here in a second. If you have that cube root button, well, you simply type in the number, hit that button, uh, and you hit enter. Okay. Uh, if you have a, and this is going to, I'm not going to talk to everyone in the class. If you have a uh, graphing calculator, many of you do. If you have a graphing calculator, you need to go to the far left hand side, hit the math button. I'm going to do it on mine here real quick. Hit the math button, and uh, it is option number four. You'll see it right there. So you hit math. Then you go to option four, uh, type in eight, and then hit enter, and it tells you the answer is two. Most calculators have this button, and this button on this calculator is right there. So uh, sometimes they reverse the X and the Y. I know if you have an iPhone and you pull up the calculator, they put the Y in the index and the X uh, as the radicand, but um, it, it's fine. Uh, the process is still done the same way. So if you have this button right here, how you take the cube root of eight is, well, the first thing is you type eight, then you hit the X root, uh, so, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 it's called the uh, radical button. You hit the radical button and then you hit in three because you're taking a cube root and then you hit enter. So for Jace and Abby, try to take the cube root of eight and make sure you get two. By the way, if it's one of these calculators where the cube root button is above, and most likely it is, then you got to hit the second button or the shift button on your calculator. Jace, you able to do it? Hang on, we're working on something. Okay. What are we working on? We're just identifying the, where the cube root button is on the calculator so that you, not only do you know how to take a cube root by hand, you can use a calculator. Okay. Do you see this? Yeah, that purple stuff above this button. So that was the button. But then when I type in maybe and enter, that is not the cubed root of eight. So that's not right. It has. So you have to type in eight first, and then the button, and then three. Okay. Let's Others, see. you have to hit the the button, and if you see the cube root pop up on the screen, and then you hit eight, and then enter. Let's see. There it is. Okay. This means the cubed root of eight. Okay. So you have to hit the three, then the second, this button, then the thing that you want to take the cubed root of, and then you can hit enter. Okay. Oh, don't you want him to see? Yeah, Miss, Miss Newburn has a cameo in my video. So some calculators, <laughs> you have to hit the three first before you hit the eight. So you, um, use this as an example, mess around with your calculator until you get to the answer is two. As soon as you get to the answer is two, then you know you're doing it right. And anyway, there's hundreds of different calculators out there. So each one's slightly unique. Abby, you getting two? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so now that you are experts at your calculator, just to confirm, uh, I want you to take, you take the cube root of 121. Take the cube root of 121. We'll just confirm that you got your calculator working and that'll be it. Take the cube root of 121 and it's not, it's not one of our numbers. It's not a perfect cube. Jace, what you get? 4.946 cube. Abby, did you get about 4.9? Yeah. All right, you guys know now know how to use your calculators. Uh, so let's see, what do we do? We uh, wrote down our, uh, at least the first 10 perfect cubes. Uh, we took the cube roots of perfect cubes. Uh, we solved equations with perfect cubes. Uh, and then the last thing is we learned how to use our calculators to take a non-perfect cube. And that's the entire class. Any questions? Don't overwhelm me with the questions. All right. 
Uh, for those that were not live here, if you have questions, if it's on the calculator, we'll probably be okay to wait till uh, there will be no um, uh, calculator test here. So um, if you don't know how to take a cube root on your calculator, we'll, we, we can hold that until uh, we get back in person after spring break. Uh, but you do, do need to know how to do the other, other two things. So take the cube root of uh, uh, number perfect cubes and to solve equations involving uh, perfect cubes as well, too. All right. If there's no questions, then we will uh, end class right here a few minutes early, about 10 minutes early, uh, and uh, send me some chats or whatever if you have any questions. Uh, don't forget to turn in your homework uh, on Teams, and I will be putting those in the grade book. The fourth quarter has already begun, so these are your first grades. If you miss one homework assignment, you almost immediately have an F. Uh, because that's the only thing in the grade book. So don't be missing any homework. All right. Any other final questions? No. All right. I will catch you guys tomorrow. Bye. See ya.